Hi everyone, I'm Valcat. Welcome back to the Punk tutorial. This is the third part. Last time we left at this point. We created our ball in the middle and then we had both of our blocks. The right block will move with the up and down keys and the left block will move with W and S. This time we are going to see how to move the ball and how to make the ball bounce off the walls and off the blocks. To create the movement of the ball, we're going to do something similar to the movement of the block. When we created our movement of the block, we first created this variable, which is the amount that the blocks are going to move whenever we press a key. So we're going to do the same thing for our, for, for our ball. In this case, in our block, we add it or subtract that amount every time we press a key. However, in the ball's case, it's going to happen every time we call the function. So now in our ball class, we are going to create our new function, which is going to be def move. For now, it's only going to need itself. Later, we'll be adding more parameters, but for now, only be self. We're going to put pass because we're going to need to add our two new variables. So those two variables are going to be self dot value x and self dot value y. Value x and value y are the amount that the ball is going to move in both the x direction and the y direction. Just like in the blocks, the number that I saw work good was 8. This way, whenever we call the function, it's going to move this amount in both x and y. Now what we have to do is change the ball's x and y position. So what we do in our move function is we type self.x plus equals self.valuex. This way, the move will be moving constantly. Remember that this plus equals is the same as saying self.x equals self.x plus, sorry, plus self.value. But it's just easier and faster to type it this way. Now we're going to do the same thing for y. So self.y plus equals plus equals self.value y. If we remember from last time, when we created our move function of our blocks, we also created a function which was update. And update updated the rectangle that the draw function was going to draw. Now we're going to do something similar and we're going to update our center function. That way, whenever it moves, the center moves. So we're going to call def update and it's only going to need itself. So whenever we call update, we're going to tell it that self.center is going to be self.x comma self.y. Remember that this has to be in parentheses, so just put them. And then after we move, we're going to call self.update. Now we should be able to run the program and we should see the ball move. Oh, sorry about that. We forgot to call this move function in our, in our main function. So let's go down to our main. Okay, here's main. And just where we call our blocks move function, we're going to call our balls move function. So ball dot move. Now it should work. So run the function. Okay, we saw the ball, it went really fast. So we're going to fix that. In order to fix that, we are going to have to add a clock to our function. So it moves a little bit slower and everything moves a little bit slower. So we're going to put clock 
equals pygame dot time dot clock. This makes our clock object have the properties of time and clock. And now inside our flag, we are going to write two things. The first one is pygame dot time dot delay. And in here, we put the amount of milliseconds. Now, what this function does is that it's going to stop the program for that time. So every time we run our loop, every time it goes through our loop, it's going to wait a specific amount of time to do the next action. This way, everything doesn't go as quickly. In this case, we're going to put 50 milliseconds. So every time our loop runs, it's going to wait 50 milliseconds before it does everything else. Keep in mind that a thousand milliseconds is the same as one second. So in here, 50 milliseconds is very, very quick. And the second thing that we're going to add is clock.tick. So clock.tick, what it does is that it helps us limit the amount of frames that happen per second. In gaming, there is a concept known as, known as FPS, which is frames per second. And it depends mostly on computers. So what we're doing here is limit that. So for every computer and for every program, it runs at the same speed and at the same frames per second, that will be a little bit more constant. So if we put 60, it should do the trick. So both of these have the opposite effect on the game. So if you put this higher, then the game will run slower. However, if you put this number higher, then the game will run faster. And the opposite goes as well. So if you put this number smaller, the game runs faster. And if you put this number smaller, then the game runs slower. Now let's try again the program. And you see the ball now is moving at a lower pace, as well as our blocks. Now what we have to do is that when the ball hits something, it's going to bounce. So we have to make that bouncing animation and we have to add that into our program. Let's go back to our move function. Okay, so when we're going to tell our ball to bounce, the program is going to need two things, the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. So to do that, we are going to ask our function for those two parameters. So we're going to ask for top and we're also going to ask for the bottom. Once we have top and bottom, we're going to check if the ball hits it. If we remember from our block move function, if we wanted to check when the block hit the top part of the screen, we checked, we checked it this way. We put that its Y position was less than or equal to the top position. And the same thing with bottom. We checked that its Y position plus its height was greater than or equal to the bottom position. We're going to do the same thing, but instead of height, it's going to be radius. Now in our ball move function, we're going to do it very similar. We are, because first we're only checking the top and the bottom of the screen, we're, we're all, we only need to concentrate on our Y position. So we're going to put if self.y, meaning if the Y position of the ball plus self.radius, that means that its position plus its radius, meaning now we're in the circumference of the ball, if those two are greater than or equal, to bottom, what this means is our self dot y is in our center. So if we grab our center's y position and then we add our radius, we're at, at the border of our circle. If our border is greater than or equal to the bottom of the screen, then we want it to change positions. Now, how do we make it change positions? What we have to do 
is multiplied by negative 1. When we multiply by negative 1, we change the direction that the ball is moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that self.value y is going to be times equals negative 1. This means, just like up here, something very similar. It means that self.value y is equal to self.value y times negative 1. So every time we run this program, it's going to change its position. I mean, it's going to change the direction. So if it's going down, it's going to start going up. We're going to check the same thing if it's going up. So if self.y minus self.radius is less than or greater, or greater to top, then self.value y times equals negative 1. So the same thing applies here. If we're going up the screen and the border of our ball touches or goes above our top part of the screen, then it's going to start going down. To try our program, we have to give these two parameters to our move function in the main loop. So let's go to our main loop. Here we are. In ball.move, we have to give our two parameters, the top and the bottom. Both of those we already know, especially from our move function in our blocks right here. We have that the top of the screen is zero and the bottom of the screen is the height. We can just copy those two, zero comma height, and paste them on our ball. If we run our program, you can see the ball goes down, hits, and then bounces up. So the bouncing is working. What we are going to do now is we're going to check if it goes to the right or to the left. Now, we are not going to do the point system yet, so we're not going to give points to either player one or player two. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to make the ball reset itself. So every time the ball goes off the screen to the right or to the left, then the ball is going to start once again in the center. Let's go back to our move function of the ball. And now we're going to need two more parameters. We're going to need left and we're going to need right. This looks like a lot of information, but once I'm done putting all the parameters that we're going to need, I'm going to explain them very, very well. And I'm going to write it out so you can see it. Before we do our move function to the left and right of the screen, we have to add two new variables in our ball class. That is because every time the ball goes past the right side of our screen or past the left side of our screen, we want our ball to go to the center of the screen again. The only variables that we have that show us the center of the screen are self.x, self.y, and self.center. However, all of those three variables are always changing. Whenever we call our move function, those variables change. So we don't have a variable or some variables that tell us what is the original center of the screen. So to do that, we're going to create two new variables. The first one is going to be self.initx, which is the initial position in x, and that is going to be equal to x. And now we're going to create self.inity, and that's going to be equal to y. That means that those two variables, init, init x and init y, are always going to be the initial x and y position of the ball. Now we can go ahead and keep coding our move function. Now we have to pay attention to our x value. That is because we are in our x axis, because we're moving from left to right. It is important to keep in mind that in Pygame, the x-axis increases from left to right. So if we want to go to the left, we have to subtract. And if we want to go to the right, we want to add. Knowing that, we can start with if self.x, meaning that it's the center's x position, minus self.radius, meaning that now we're at the border of our ball, but to the left side. And that means that if it's less than or equal to left, 
then we want the ball to recenter. So to do that, we have to put that self.x, meaning its current x position, is going to be equal to self.initx, initx. Whenever it goes to the left, its current x position is going to be equal to the starting x position. And we're going to do the same thing for the y. So self.y is going to equal self.init y. Now we have to do the same thing for the right. We can even copy and paste this. So we copy it and we paste it. Now because we're going to go to the right, we don't, we don't need to subtract our radius. We have to add our radius. And that means that if our x position plus our radius, radius position is greater than, greater than or equal to the right position, I mean to the right, to the right of the screen, then we want again, we want it again to reset our x and y coordinates. So we want self.x to be the initial x and self.y to be the initial y. And at the end, we want it to update our position. Let's try it and see if it works. Okay, so we have an error, and that is because we forgot to add our left and our right arguments to our function. So let's go down to our main loop. Right here, when we have our ball.move, we have to add left and right. Our left position is going to be the leftmost side of the screen. In this case, it's going to be zero because we don't have anything else. And our right position is going to be the rightmost side of the screen. In this case, it's going to be the total width of the screen that we created. Now we should be able to run the program. So let's run it. The ball moves, it bounces, and if it hits here, it resets. You see? Okay, so it goes to the, it always goes to the right. We can change that. So we want to change that whenever someone scores a goal in either side, we want the ball to move in the opposite direction. To do that, we go back to our move function right here where we coded our, if it goes to the left or if it goes to the right, we have to add one more thing. We have to change our value for x. So self that value x is going to be times equals negative one. And the same thing down here, we can just copy it and paste, copy and paste. Now we can try it. So it runs, it's going to the right, and after it scores, it starts going to the left. And if something scores, then it starts going to the right again. So, so far it's working. Now in here, you can see that if I put the block, for example, in, it, in its path, the ball just goes through the same thing with the other one. So now we have to code that if it hits the block, then it's going to stop moving. I mean, it's going to bounce. To do that, we have to add two new parameters to our move function. That is block one and block two. Now I'm going to write what all of those things do. So in here we have our parameters. Top is going to be a number and it's going to be the top most part of the screen. Bottom is also going to be a number and it's going to be the bottom most part of the screen. Left is going to be a number, it's going to be the left most part of the screen and right is also going to be a number it's going to be the right most part of the screen so all of them are very self-explanatory but i'm just doing this so all of you can see exactly what we have block one is going to be a block class it doesn't need a description and block two is also going to be a block class. For now, it doesn't return anything, but 
in the future it is going to return something. Before we keep coding here, I'm going to add both of those objects in our function. So let's go down to our main loop and right here where we have our ball.move, I'm going to add both of our new objects. So we're going to need our block one and our block two. So we put block one comma block two. There we go. Now we can go back to our move function. I'm going to show you the variables that our blocks have. In here, we can see the variables that our block class has. It has its X position, its Y position, its width, and its height. We're going to need to know those four variables in order to make the ball bounce whenever it hits the block. Knowing that, we can start coding. Now in our move function, in our ball, we're going to do as follows. If self.x, meaning its x position, plus self.radius, that means that we're going, we're going to the right. And if we're going to the right, we have to think which block is to the right side of our screen. If we see the image, we know that our, we know that block two is the one on the right. So we want if self.x plus radius is greater than or equal to block two dot x, that means if it's greater than or equal to its x position, then we want it to do something. But we also have to keep in mind the width of the block. If we see here in, this, in our image, here is our x position for our block. If we go greater than that, then you see that there is a lot of space that doesn't correspond to the block that is greater than the block's x position. So we have to limit that position to the block's x and the block's width. To do that, we have to put one more condition. We have to put block under block underscore two dot width plus block underscore two dot x greater than or equal to self dot x. Now let me explain what this means. We are paying attention to the ball's center x position plus its radius. We have to make sure that the ball's x position plus radius is in between the block's x position and the block's x position plus the block's width. Now we need another condition. That condition is in the y axis of our screen. That means that our ball's y position has to be between the block's total height. It, we could do it in the same line and put an and, and both of the conditions have to be true but I'm not going to do it because it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I just want to make it very clear. This part of the code, I know it's not going to be perfect because of some geomet geometry stuff, but if I do it how it's meant to be, then it'll just be, it'll just be way too complicated. Maybe in the future I will do a video explaining Pong variation or something like that, where I show how this next section should be. But for now, we're just going to leave it how I'm about to do it. So we're going to do the same. If, now it's, it is an if statement, we have to keep in mind what we want it to be if. We want the bolt's Y position to be in between the block top side and the block's bottom side. So let's start coding both the top side of the block and the bottom side of the block. We know that the, the block two stop side, we know the top side of block two is block two dot y. And we know that block two's bottom side is block two dot y plus block two dot height. We know that this part right here 
is the top side and we know that this part right here is the bottom side. We want the bolt's position to be in between those two. We want it to be less than or equal to the top side, but we want it to be greater than or equal to the bottom side. What exactly do we want to have in the middle of those two? So the first thing that we want is we want to have self.y. So we want to have the ball's y position. What do we have to add? We have to add our radius, just like we have been doing all this time. So we have to put plus self.radius. If it goes through both of this, we know that the ball is touching the block. So if both of those are true, we want the ball to bounce in the opposite x direction. So to do that, we'll just put self that value x times equals negative one. We're just going to copy this and paste it. And now we have to do it for block one. If we're doing it for block one, we know that the y is going to be the same. So just put one, one, and one. However, for our x-axis, it's going to be a little bit different. That is because our x value in our block one is going to be the leftmost part of the block. We don't want the ball to we don't want the ball to be greater than that. We want the ball to be less than that. So if we change this sign, we also have to change this sign. And we just change the twos for ones. So in here, what we're, what we're saying is if the ball self.x plus self.radius is greater than or equal to the rightmost part of the block, but it's less than the leftmost part of the block, that means that it is between the block's total width, then it's going to bounce. Let's see if it works. I go down and it doesn't bounce. Okay, give me a second. A few moments later. Also, one thing that we have to change is that this plus has to be a minus because now we're going in the left direction and not the right direction. An hour later. Okay, I'm back. So I found the mistakes because I actually had two mistakes and they were as follow. The first thing is in the y coordinates of both block one and block two. They're not meant to be greater than, they're meant to be less than. And that is because of what I've been telling you so much about that I forgot for some reason that the y-axis increases from top to bottom. So what that means is that block 2.y is not going to be greater than all this. It has to be less because it has to be in between them. And the greater one is going to be this one. So I made that mistake and we have to fix it in both block 1 and block 2. So just make this less than and make this one less than. And now my other mistake is once again, here in block one, but it's in the X position. We were not meant to change this signs. They were, main, they were meant to stay like this. And that is because it follows the same logic as block two. This is the smaller number. And this is the bigger number. That's why. It was my mistake. I don't know why I forgot it and I got them confused, but now it should work. So if we run them, we put block two, it bounces, and then if we put block one, it also bounces. So now we have the ball bouncing off everything, which is exactly what we wanted. But if we wait and see, there is actually a bug somewhere. Okay, hold on. 12 seconds later. Here, let's wait and see. And as you can see, there is a bug that happens that when the ball gets in specific region, then the ball keeps bouncing on and off. 
and that is because it enters a region in which it is between those parameters but when it switches direction it stays between those parameters so it keeps bouncing on and off until it leaves the y-axis so we have to change that to fix that okay we're going to need to add two more variables those are going to be self.hit1 which is going to start false and then self.hit2 which is also going to start false now what those two are going to do is it's going to tell us whether it hit block one or it hit block two. That way it won't keep hitting it multiple times. It will only hit it once. So now we have that. We're going to create okay, we're going to create one more function for when someone scores a goal and it's going to be def reset and it's going to need self. So if this function is called what it's going to do is going to redefine our hits. So self.hit self hit one is going to be equal to false. And self.hit two is going to be equal equal to false. That way when we call it, it will just tell us that neither block has been hit. And we will call those two whenever it goes more than our left or more than our right. We'll just call self.reset and the same thing here, self.reset. Okay, that's just something that we have to do so it can hit both blocks after someone scores a goal, but now we actually need to fix this. So what we need to do is if the ball if it is between the blocks width and it is between the blocks height, we need the code to check if hit is false. So we're going to put if not hit two, that means because hit two is either going to be a true or a false, this part of the program is only going to run if it's not hit two. That means if hit two is false. If hit two is false, that means that it hasn't hit the ball before. So if it hasn't hit the ball before, the first thing that we wanted to do is change the direction. So we put self that value x times equals negative one. I'm sorry, it's meant to be self dot hit two. There we go. Then we wanted to redefine itself. So self dot hit two is going to be equal to true because now we know that it did hit the block. And what we're going to do is we're going to change hit one. So we're going to tell that self.hit1 is going to equal false. That is because block one is going to have these same conditions. So if we hit block one, then block one is going to be true. But if we hit block two and block two is also true, then the bolt's not going to hit anything. So we need to change them back once he hits the other block. So in this case, he hits block two. Now we need block one to be false. Now we can just copy this and paste it down here. We can just erase this part. And now what we wanted to do is change the two for a one and change the one for a two. Let's run the program and see if it works. I'll just run this for a while to see if we get the bug again, but I don't think it will happen. One hour later. Okay, that's it for the third tutorial of the Pong series. Hope that you enjoyed it and it was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. And thank you for watching.